After almost an eight-year break, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare series returns in grand fashion with the appropriately titled Call of Duty Modern Warfare, a reboot and revisioning on the classic characters we all know and love. Since we took a look at the stories of the original Modern Warfare games last year, we figured now would be a good time to take a look at the new story as well. Or now, plus two hours or so. Seeing as this is the first new game we're covering on this series, I will say that there is a huge spoiler warning for this video. Seriously, we're going to tell you the entire story, so if you want to play it for yourself, go check out our video on the original Modern Warfare and Black Ops stories instead. With all of that out of the way, this is what you need to know about Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Our story begins in present-day 2019 in the country of Urzikstan, where a terrorist organization called al Qatala has been founded by Omar the Wolf Solomon in response to Russian occupation of their land. Seeking to remove all foreign agents from their soil, the group resorts to committing various acts of terrorism, killing several civilians. Meanwhile, the CIA Inspector General Kate Laswell sends her agents, including an operative with the codename Alex, along with the U.S. Marines to Verdonsk, Russia, to investigate a shipment of weaponized chlorine gas under the command of General Roman Barkov, which is set to move to Urzikstan. The U.S. forces infiltrate the facility, only to discover that the troops guarding the gas are Russian military. Alex discovers the gas and they leave with the containers. However, they are soon ambushed by an unknown group of terrorists who kill several Marines. Upon learning that the men they've killed are American and not Russian, the insurgents quickly make off with the gas. Back at the Marine camp, General Lyons informs Laswell that chemical weapons are now in the wild and tells her to fix the issue at any cost. Laswell then makes a call to Captain John Price of the British Army's Special Air Service Unit, who predicts that the gas will show up in London. There, the SAS sends Sergeant Kyle Garrick, who along with his team spot a white van containing several white canisters. The SAS try to apprehend the men in the van, but it takes off and detonates in the Piccadilly Circus, triggering an army of insurgents to emerge and begin killing civilians and law enforcement en masse. After fighting their way through several insurgents, Garrick checks a nearby building for hostages and is saved from an attack by an arriving Price, who then takes point. The pair find the hostages, but one is strapped with explosives. Realizing it's too late to disarm the bomb, Price throws the hostage off a nearby balcony before it detonates, saving Garrick and the rest of the hostages. In the aftermath, Garrick reveals that his men have been tracking the terrorist cell for weeks, and valuing his intel, Price takes Garrick with him. In Urzikstan, al Qatala has claimed responsibility for the attack at Piccadilly Circus, and Alex is sent to search for the stolen Russian chemicals, now believed to be in their hands. There he meets with Price's contact, Farah Karim, commander of the Urzikstan Liberation Force. Twenty years prior, the village Farah lived in was attacked by Russian forces. Her mother was killed in the initial airstrike, but she survived and was reunited with her father. The two head off to search for her brother, Hadir, but Russian forces quickly arrive and begin killing all of the men and capturing the women, looking for information on resistance fighters. As they reach their home, the Russian soldiers begin to deploy the chlorine gas, killing nearly all of the villagers. Inside their home, Farah and her father find Hadir. Their father gives Hadir a gas mask and both children a cell phone in case they get separated. However, as they try to leave, a Russian soldier begins to check the house, prompting a fight in which he knocks out Hadir and shoots their father. Farah sneaks around the house, finding a screwdriver, and uses it to attack the soldier. When he retaliates, Hadir arrives with another one, and the two attack him with their makeshift weapons until Farah is able to grab his gun and take him out. Farah takes the soldier's gas mask, and the two say their final goodbyes to their dying father, who, with his final breath, tells them to never back down. They leave the house and make their way out of the city, eventually finding two Russians guarding a truck. Farah is able to find a gun and shoot the guards, and the two steal the truck. However, as they prepare to leave, they are stopped by Barkov, who captures the two and takes them prisoner. The pair then spend the next ten years in captivity. One day, Hadir wakes Farah and gives her a key. Barkov arrives, looking for information on an unknown Commander Karim, who has been sending messages to the SAS. He leads Farah to a chair, where she is waterboarded for information on the identity of Commander Karim. After refusing to give him information, however, Barkov kills one of her fellow captives and takes Farah back to her cell. There, he demands the key that Hadir stole, but is interrupted when the compound is attacked. Barkov leaves, instructing his men to take all of the prisoners to a nearby warehouse to burn them to the ground. Farah uses a nearby spoon to create a shiv, and escapes her cell through some ventilation ducts. She uses it to dispatch a nearby guard, taking his gun to take out another. She finds her fellow captives, who show her what the key Hadir gave her opens, a nearby gun cap. The women take the guns and fight their way out of the prison, eventually reaching the warehouse. There, however, they are pinned down by the Russian forces. Just in time, the SAS arrive, and John Price, a lieutenant at the time, meets with Farah, who introduces herself as Commander Karim. 
The group find the prisoners and Farah, with Price's help, pry open the door to allow them to escape. Back in present day, Alex informs Farah on the theft of the Russian gas, and she agrees that only Al-Qatala would do so. Adir arrives and they make a deal with Alex to help him with the Al-Qatala issue as long as he helps them take back their city from Barkov's men. Hadir gives Alex some explosive charges, and he and Farah disguise themselves and head out, leaving Hadir behind to watch their safe house. The two eventually find two helicopters, and Alex plants the explosives on them. After detonation, the Russian forces arrive, and Farah uses several other explosives to take out their artillery. With the Russians distracted on the city, Hadir takes Alex to use their explosive RC airplanes to attack a nearby Russian airbase. The ULF storm the field and secure an armory before U.S. air support arrives and takes out the remaining Russian forces, temporarily crippling the Russians' ability to use air forces in Uzbekistan. Back in London, the SAS track down the Al-Qatala members behind the Piccadilly attack to a safe house. Garrick, Price, and the Bravo 6 team infiltrate the house and eliminate the terrorist members inside. In the attic, they find a laptop with a bevy of information on the cell's plans and locations, including the IP address of a hospital in Uzbekistan where their leader, the Wolf, is hiding. Alex meets up with the Marines, led by Sergeant Griggs. They storm the hospital and eventually find and capture the Wolf, rescuing several U.S. hostages in the process. They take him back to the U.S. Embassy in Uzbekistan, but Al-Qatala forces arrive, led by a man named The Butcher, and demand his release. Inside, the Wolf proclaims that his group did not steal the Russian gas, though he wishes they did. The Al-Qatala forces attack the Embassy, and Price and Garrick arrive to help them extract the team. On their way inside, the Butcher demands access to the facility, killing an innocent man and his child as intimidation. They reach Farah, Hadir, Alex, and the Wolf in a safe room in the basement. Garrick watches as an Al-Qatala member kills the Ambassador, but he is able to lead his assistant to safety to obtain his keycard. They use the keycard to open the rear doors and escape to the Ambassador's residence, which is attacked. While the group are able to fend off the attack, the Al-Qatala forces are able to breach the wall and escape with the Wolf. Knowing there's only one road to escape, Farah sets up an ambush there with Adir and Alex. They watch the crossroads and eventually see the arrival of the wolf soldiers. They open fire and begin a battle with the opposition. They are able to defeat the army and determine that the wolf must be on his way. While they await his arrival, however, Barkov's army arrives and attacks the village. Outnumbered, Hadir leads Alex to his truck, stating that it has explosives they can use. However, upon opening the tailgate, Alex finds that inside is the stolen Russian gas. Hadir puts on his gas mask and carries Alex and Farah to safety. Farah denounces her brother's actions before passing out. Hadir then admits to Alex that he did steal the Russian gas, but only to help them in their fight. He then runs off as Alex passes out as well. When the two awaken, Price and Garrick arrive and take them back to meet with Laswell. Laswell determines that they have to capture Hadir and the remaining gas as soon as possible, and Farah volunteers to go with to find her brother. Laswell reveals intel that Hadir has made contact with the Wolf and the Butcher to provide them with the gas to use on Barkov's men. The group then head to retrieve the gas and kill the Wolf. They find that the Wolf is hiding underground, and Farah and Alex head down in search of him. After traversing through some tunnels, the pair find the Wolf, strapped with explosives. Farah kills him, and the pair work together to disarm the explosives. With one threat down, the group reconvenes, and Laswell, along with Marine Colonel Norris, inform them that Farah's group has now been relabeled as a terrorist organization after the discovery of the gas theft. Alex defies command and heads with Farah to rejoin her forces. Laswell and Price discuss their options, and Price suggests meeting with a contact in St. Petersburg named Nikolai. He takes Garrick and the trio track down the butcher in order to find Hadir. They give chase on foot, but Nikolai is able to hit him with his van, incapacitating him and allowing the three to take him captive. When he refuses to give any information, Nikolai arrives with his wife and child. After Garrick threatens their lives, the Butcher reveals the location of the gas, a nearby theater, as well as Hadir's plan to go after Barkov. Nikolai gives Price and Garrick a police cruiser to leave the city undetected, and returns to leave the gas with the Butcher for the Russian army to find and dispose of. Price and Garrick head to Barkov's estate and find Hadir there. He reveals that he has uncovered the location of Barkov's chemical factory, and the pair escape the compound with him. After reaching safety, they put him under arrest, but give their word that they will take down Barkov's facility with Farah. Laswell arrives to take Hadir and hand him over to the Russians. Price complies with the condition that they are able to keep the intel on the facility that he acquired. Price goes to meet with Farah, where he is met with hostility. He informs her of her brother's fate, but offers to help her take out the facility with the information her brother obtained knowing that if Farah's army took out the facility, NATO would blame Al-Qatala. Price, Garrick, Farah, and Alex head to eastern Georgia to find the facility. With help from Laswell, they are able to defeat their defenses and infiltrate the facility. 
After getting inside the compound, Alex and Farah are able to meet with Nikolai, who provides them with explosive charges. Inside the facility, however, they are met with strong opposition from a heavily armored juggernaut soldier. Alex and Farah reach the furnace, but Alex reveals that the detonator for the explosives was damaged in the fight with the juggernaut. Farah offers that she will light the furnace in order to detonate the explosives, but Alex argues that it would be a suicide mission and somebody needs to kill Barkov. She reluctantly gives the order, and Alex heads in to man the furnace. Meanwhile, Price and Garrick fight their way to the pipeline to set the explosive charges for Alex to detonate. However, just as they do, they watch as Barkov's helicopter escapes the facility. However, Farah is hiding inside, and attacks him with a knife. She finally kills him, avenging her family and her country. Alex then sacrifices his life, lighting the furnace and destroying the facility. Farah heads to the front of the helicopter, which is revealed to be piloted by Nikolai, and he asks her where to. She responds with Urzikstan, and she finally heads home. Sometime later, Price meets with Laswell for tea. She reveals that in the aftermath of the mission, Russia disowned Barkov. She then hands over a folder of files that Price requested from a General Shepard. He reveals that the files are for a task force he wants to form. Laswell initially denies the request, but reveals that a man named Zakaev wants to take Bakrov's place. Price states that he and Macmillan almost killed him in Pripyat on a past mission, but Laswell clarifies that she is referring to his son, Victor. She states Zakaev will get Hadir out of captivity, and Price requests the files once again. The files are intel on recruits for Price's task force. These include Sergeant Garrick, given the nickname Gaz, an SAS sniper named John Soap McTavish, a man without a picture named Simon Riley, and others Price keeps secret. Laswell asks what Price will be calling this task force, and he simply states, 141. Sometime later, the Russians are attacked by Al Qatala, led by a new unknown leader. Laswell briefs Price and Nikolai on the situation, and they are soon met by Sergeant Komarov of the Russian army. The group then vow to take down this new leader and contain the threat, but maybe we'll save that for another time. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and of course, if you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe for more. And leave a comment letting us know what you'd like us to cover next. Also, please consider supporting us on Patreon or becoming a channel member on YouTube. That really helps us out. Special thanks to those folks now. Tetuan Bryant, Jeremy Carlson, Ryan Post, Tom Callahan, Alan Sinclair, Stephen Castaneda, T.U.M., Kristen T., some grass clippings, and William Mathers. 